Yo, what's up? It's your girl Janelle Jezebel. I'm coming out of Chat Town, Tennessee, and I'm on Industries Most Wanted. I got my baby hook and a tango. All in the sheets and tango. I got a wrong luck, no, she won't go nowhere. Hey, what's going on, man? It is your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the Industries Most Wanted podcast. Industries. Big Industries Most, Most Wanted, not a little one. Wanted. I heard we got chat in the building, t- Big Tennessee. Janelle Jezebel, how you doing, yes, beautiful? Yes, I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Thank you for being here. I'm doing good. That's good. That's I appreciate good. you being here. It's I'm a glad vibe. To be here. Yeah, it's a vibe with you. I can already tell the energy is on point. Most definitely. Most definitely. Definitely. Go ahead and introduce yourself. So, um, first of all, I'm Janelle Jezebel. Um, I'm coming out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. I am a singer, songwriter, hip hop, and R and B artist. Um, sometimes I mix both of them up. Um, I'm also a co chair at uh, MFA Foundation. Dot, um, out of Chattanooga, so um, I do a lot of different things. I'm also a teacher during the day, like so. That's yeah. my kind of my thing. Like I teach by day, and I'm I'm lit by night. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have alter egos when you do different stuff. Most definitely, I definitely feel like um, it's hard. To, uh, I say, I, at first, I was at a point where I couldn't separate the two, or yeah. I felt like I had to separate the two. But um, you can teach music, uh, teach t- t- teach children through music as well. So. I mean, I feel like they kind of go hand in hand. I just kind of, I know what I can have for the children and what is for the grown folks. Absolutely. So is that what you teach? Uh, No, I don't teach just music, but um, a lot of my transitions during school time is I use music. So um, if I'm trying to get them to come in from the playground without it being a big fight or fuss, (laughs) I just use transition songs to kind of get them in. So, I mean, I kind of get to work on my craft all day. I'm, ch- I'm cheating a little bit. <laughs> no, I love that. I, you are able to incorporate what you love doing in your personal time into the business side. Yeah. Music is a universal language. Everybody loves music. That's facts. That's true. And it's That's therapeutic, true. so it works for the kids, too. Yep. yep. I love that. How long have you been a teacher? Um, I've been teaching professionally for about 11 years now. Okay. Yeah, about 11 years. Let's take it back when you were younger. Was that something that you, when you were a little girl, you were like, I'm going to be a teacher when I grow up? Um, yeah. I, I think a lot of people get it mis- uh, messed up. Like when you say you love kids and versus when you want to teach children. So yes. once I got in the field, I saw that there was a big difference. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do still love kids, but I do also thoroughly enjoy teaching them. So I went to school for it. I got my... Um, Associates in early childhood education, yeah. and um, I've just been rocking out ever since. Um, I I do claim that I'm a pretty good teacher. Yeah, like, I'm not, sure you are. You know, I, I do my best. You know, yeah. um, I work. I only work with one year olds. Um, okay, I'm qualified up to third grade, but I like the younger age group. Um, I just really like seeing them grow because they learn so fast. So. Being a part of their journey. Yeah. You and I are very much alike on that. That's why I like working with independent artists versus the majors, because I love being a part of their journey when they're coming up. Yes. And I think I'd be like you. If I wanted to teach kids, I'd be with the one-year-olds as well. So they can't talk (laughs) back to me. Hey, that's the thing. Like, they might be able to hold me in other ways, but they cannot sass me as much as the older ones. Absolutely. That is (laughs) dope. That could be crazy. But you know what, though? It really takes a special person to do what you do because you have to have a lot of patience. Yes, most definitely. A lot of patience yes. because at that age, they're they're so vulnerable to you. Oh, yeah, most definitely. They're picking up on everything. Um, they're figuring out their emotions. Yeah. Even the parents are like, I can't do what you do. Like, I don't see how you do this. You're like, hey, every day you do this. Like, like. God chose me, so. Yes, you are chosen, and like I said, it definitely takes a special person because not everybody would be cut out for that. Most definitely. So bless your heart for doing that because we need people like you. <laughs> Most definitely. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate it. What is the age range? So you said starting at one to how old? Um, well, we start at six weeks. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Baby babies. Yeah, so um, that can be, you know, just teaching the baby how to work their fingers, yeah. how to grab stuff, roll over. That's so to, sweet. You know, Learning how to spell and learning your months of the year and stuff. Absolutely. (laughs) You're one of the most important people in their life at that age because they need somebody with those patients because, you know, no shade to some parents out there. But, you know, some parents, they don't even have the patience or claim they have the time to do that stuff. That's true. I think it's it's both. Like, they don't have the time or the patience. Um, And when they do have the patience, they don't have the time. So. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love it. So I you got like so. a, you got, those are all your kids, you know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I have a lot of kids. Yeah. I got one at home, but I got like 60 or 70 <laughs> at, the, at the daycare. Wow, <laughs> definitely. How old is your little one at the house? He is one as well. So sometimes he has to be in my class and Aww. let me just tell you, you always have that one child you miss, <laughs> wish miss a day. <laughs> my child is that child. <laughs> I love him to death, but he just has so much energy and it might be my fault because we watch UFC on the weekends. Mm. On Saturdays, I usually watch UFC. So he's been trying to punch people and stuff. Like, he's just a little rowdy, a little fellow. That fella, is funny. He's so sweet when he wants to be, though. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah, my son was into, like, the wrestling and stuff. Okay, and same so thing. Know what I mean. He would get up on stuff and try to jump, <laughs> jump off. I'm off. like, oh, my yep. gosh, you're going to break your neck. That's him. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> that is dope. How did it change your life having a child? Um, Huh, that that journey is crazy within itself, but it changed my life a lot because I got to see someone grow firsthand. Yeah. Um, at first, I was worried because I didn't carry that I wouldn't, you know, grow the bond. The bond, with him. yeah, understood. But you know, being in the house with him, just watching him grow, knowing that he came from who he came from, it's it's just like, man, dang, I really got a kid. Um, I love it. It's, it's different. Like now, my family is expecting me to carry, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> do you think that'll ever be a part of your journey? I'm preparing for it now. I yeah. guess you could say um, I do because I don't want to waste my womanly experience. But 100. percent I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like pain, so yeah. Um, <laughs> and and there's I, a lot of that. Yeah, and I watch firsthand. But um, talking to different women about their journey, when, about them having their baby, kind of has eased my my anxiety on it because they just mostly say that you're just going to get so attached that all that other stuff go out the window. It is the absolute yeah. facts. I had my son when I was 19, so I okay. felt like I was still almost a baby myself, literally right out of high school. I and I was so worried in the beginning. Like, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. All those motherly instincts and that bond while they're still in your belly yeah. is just, it outweighs everything else to the point where I had natural childbirth. Okay. I didn't okay. I didn't have no epidurals, none of that. I had oh, not wow. that was by choice. Right. But it's so funny, quick side story. When <laughs> I got about like maybe eight, nine centimeters dilated, that's when that ooh, the pain was hitting. Yeah. I was like, Can y'all please give me something? And like it's too late now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like <laughs> Fortunately I only had a six hour labor, so it was okay. fairly quick. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, no. My girlfriend was in labor for like what, two <laughs> and two and a half days, maybe wow. three days. Wow, um, bless her she heart. She dilate. Um she had preeclampsia, so Everything was just a little bit scary on our end at that at that moment yeah. because it was like, man, why he ain't coming? But uh, right, absolutely. She ended up having to have a C section and yeah. then he came and he was huge. Which so I'm, I'm, she probably happy he didn't come out vaginal. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Like we gonna stretch that thing out. Yeah, he was eight pounds. That's so. a big baby. Yeah, he's huge. Oh, <laughs> that's so beautiful. What is his name? His name is Genesis. Genesis, Genesis shout out to, to you, baby Genesis. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, sir. I love you, baby. <laughs> yes, that is dope. So you grew up in chat? Yeah, my whole life. Take us back to your childhood growing up out there versus how it is now. Like, what are some of the biggest differences growing up there versus now? Um, well, um, my city has become super political. So back then, <laughs> <laughs> everybody had their sides, their corners. Like, we had North Chat, we had East Chat, we yeah. had South Chat. Um the west side, you know, everybody had their defined spaces. Uh, we all would click up together. Um, that's happening a lot more now that we have four to three days. So everybody's kind of collabing and throwing their own events. But they're celebrating Chattanooga as a whole, which is beautiful, instead of being so divided. Yeah. But now it's like, like I said, it's becoming so political that, like, they're splitting up the names of the sides of town now. Mm. North Chat is now North Shore, and Brainerd is now Midtown. Or, you know, so they're just changing um, the way that they do things. Um Finding a house is terrible out there. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Unless you're making, like, buku bukus of money, it's, it's, it's hard to even move. Absolutely. Um, so back then I just feel like it was more, well, I would say because of social media, too, everything was a lot more connected. Like, everybody was getting together a lot more often. Right. So it's a little, um, I say half and half, because yeah. now we're having a lot more events in Chattanooga that we didn't used to have, um, especially, if, like, as far as, the local music scene, like a lot of it has been enhanced. Um, we have a lot more places that we can go to perform. They're becoming a little bit more accepting. Yeah. But um, we're just waiting on one side of the venue to be like, hey, this is where we host hip hop music. This is where we host R&B music all the time, not when we want to. Or, right. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, 
I say the difference between back then and now is we didn't have shit at first. Yeah. <laughs> and now we have something. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, you know, I guess it's kind of a bittersweet. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You're yeah. The enhancements on some things are very much of a positive, Mom but then some stuff you're like, man, I wish we could revert back to the way it was back yes. then. Yeah, like we used to have like the strut, like where everybody would go. Like we had river band, so strut was a part of that. And on that Monday, everybody could go and walk. It did kind of get a little crazy within the last, I said, a couple of years of them hosting it. So they tried to put a $5 stipend on it, and then it kind of just drove everybody away. They kind of put a lot of, I don't know, it's just the vibe of it changed. I don't know. It's just, you know, Chattanooga has been on the rise with the violence, too. So yeah. it just, I guess they're trying to change how they do stuff and who they let do stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it it's becomes very political. Yeah. I've watched Atlanta because I've been coming yeah. here for many, many, many years. And I watched, you know, I was here back in the 90s during Freak Nick era, okay. right? I watched how they just completely phased that out, mm -hmm. you know, because they brought the Olympics here. And then after that, so many things changed. Yeah. They try to run a lot of the homeless people from downtown, yeah. and, you know, it becomes very political, and it's, it's a bittersweet, you know? Definitely. Like, I wish that it um, they could find a, a healthy balance. There you go. Um, <laughs> because, like, I understand that you do want your city to look nice, and you do want, you know, it to be inviting to other people and stuff, but... You also have to take to the culture of that city. That's facts. You know what I'm saying? Hundred so percent. You have to cater. Can't wash us out. You know. Oh. No, yeah. Right. Because you've been there since birth. Exactly. Exactly. What were you into as a child? Um, as a child, I was into music and basketball. Okay. Um, I was very like shy, kind of to myself. Like I had a lot of friends. I was because I'm I'm a friendly person, but um, for the most part, I. Played music. Um, I used to like how I figured out I could sing is I would watch music videos all the time, and mm. whoever was singing like a Leo or Genuine, I would try to mimic them. And um, so I did a lot of singing. I started writing when I was probably about nine or ten. Wow! Wow! And <laughs> it's music or poetry? Um, music. Yeah. I would actually write like a melody to it, so I always wow. considered it as music. But even though it was poetry, yeah. Um, I remember my cousin, uh, we were singing over the phone, and she just kept on telling me, sing that again, sing that again. And she's like, you don't come down here? So I went down there, and it was like 15 to 20 people in her house, and she had been letting them listen to me sing on the phone. Oh, wow. So that was the birth of, like, you you need to sing or something. Yeah. And um, I kind of kept writing. I never really went to the studio at that age because – I don't think my parents even knew about really how to get me into that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, and my dad, he's like a super holy roller. So <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I told him I wanted to do music, he was like, nah, you're going to end up like them girls on Hustle and Flow. <laughs> I was like, what? It's That's hard it. out here for a pimp. It's crazy. <laughs> I was like, he watched one bad movie. Like, oh, no. So That is so funny. But yeah. do you think your dad would have been cool if you were saying, okay, I'm more on the gospel side versus the secular side? Almost definitely because <clears throat> at one point he had me listening into like contemporary rap yeah like um christian rap and all that type of stuff so like i, it, I was going to school i was bad but <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't your vibe though yeah like my dad just had me listening to what he wanted me to because he felt like the music was poison and stuff yeah. like and some of it is but i feel like the music that I, never influenced me to go and do anything that i didn't want to do right so i mean i was sneaking listen to it whenever i could all the time like, it was, it's weird because I was raised, like, the first half of my life with my mom and then the, f the second half with my dad. Yeah. So from birth to, like, 10 or 11 years old, I was with my mom, and I didn't have any rules. I could listen to whatever I wanted to. Yeah. i do whatever I want to do. Then I moved in with my dad and his wife, and he kind of got a little strict on me and <laughs> stripped some stuff away. Part of it, I guess, is what we need, though. Yeah. And yeah. during yeah. that time, you're like, but as you get older, you understand why. Yeah, I feel like it shaped me. Like, I can sit in a lot of rooms and... I could talk about the hip hop. I could also talk about some Christian rap. There I could you go. Talk about some contemporary gospel. So, you know, it just it shaped me well as a person. Absolutely. Is he on board with you now with the music? Oh yeah, he's on board with everything. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I'm the coolest girl in the world. I so love funny. That. Daddy's girl. <laughs> yeah. Our dad. first love as a young woman, a little girl, is our dad. That's true. That's, That's our first love. True. He saved me from a lot. Like, 
I'm not gonna front like he's been the best dad, but of course, what he has taught me has been beneficial to me. Yeah. I say that. That's beautiful. I love it. And it sounds like you guys have a great relationship. He lives in Chattanooga as well. Yeah, he does. Your mom's there too. Yeah, she. Oh, is. that's good. You yeah, got both, both of them on close on. by. Yeah, they both. They they. It's like the older I get, they're becoming the kids, and I'm becoming the parent though, because they're older than me. I mean, so it, like they're older, older. Yeah. So it's like they're calling me. They need to go to the grocery store. <laughs> so it's like. I never I forgot to do my insurance. I forgot Aww. to pay my phone bill. So it's like, Mom, you know you're supposed to set that up before. Like, do it I on auto pay. Yeah, to do this and yeah, teaching them technology is crazy. My dad is way better at it than my mom. Yeah, <laughs> I think men usually are in the older years. Yeah, yeah. So he he knows how to use Cash App and everything. My mom, she's still like. Hey, can you go deposit this money for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I already know. It took me a while to get my parents because they're in their 70s. My yeah. mom's passed. But it took me a long time to get them on board because they're yeah. afraid of getting hacked and yes. people stealing their account information. <laughs> I'm just like, that can happen even offline, too. Yeah, you know what I'm definitely. saying? It just happened with a phone call. <laughs> uh, there you go. They call and scam. Man. Let me ask you this. Did you give them their first grandbaby? Uh, no. Um, not. Well, no, my oldest brother did. Uh, from my dad's side, I did. Yeah. But from my mom's side, no, my oldest brother, he, I got a brother. He's we're like fifteen years apart. So okay. Yeah, he he had kids first. How did your How did your dad feel about that being a grand a, a new grandpa? He was overjoyed, and it's crazy <laughs> because everybody always say that the baby looks like me for real, Aww. and everybody's like, "What did y'all do so special?" And now <laughs> I have no idea. Nothing special was done. At all. <laughs> Life happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, he just so happened to look like me. I don't know. So yeah. my dad was like, dang, he even looked like us. This is crazy. That's funny. So he's always calling and telling me, like, his plans on what he wants to do. He wants, you need to start him a bank account. You need to do this Aww. and do that. So That's beautiful. He, he loves him. My mom does, too. Both of them, they always calling and checking on him and stuff. That's beautiful. Definitely. Absolutely. Listen, it becomes bigger than us when we have kids. <laughs> Most definitely. They Instantly. They don't check on us. They check on them. Great Absolutely. <laughs> when is your baby's birthday? Uh, July 9th. What's coming up? Yep, yep. What are you guys doing for the birthday? Oh, we're trying to figure that out now <laughs> because he... He likes trucks and cars and stuff, yeah. but he don't like the sounds mm, that they make. They're understood, too loud. yeah. But he also likes dinosaurs and Aww. he likes Elmo. So That's we cute. did Elmo the first year. We're thinking we're leaning towards dinosaurs this year. Yeah. So that'll be a dope thing. It would be. That would be really, he really, really dope. likes dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> that is dope. So taking it back to when you first started doing music, I know you were on the phone with your family and they're like, yeah. sing this again. And that's when they really they discovered that you yeah. had a voice. When do you feel like you discovered you had a voice? Hmm. I say when I was able to go to the studio and record my own original song. Yeah. Because I was so used to like mimicking other people that I, I sound like them I feel like so um I say when I was about 21 okay I wrote this song called act like you know and I was able to hold my tone because I always had this thing like when I go to the studio it's something about the headphones and the microphone yeah I would just get so nervous and so <laughs> shaky kind of like I am right now a little bit <laughs> but um my voice would crack a lot. Yeah. But when I take the headphones off, I'm just walking around washing dishes. Sound beautiful. Yes. I was like, man, what am I what am I doing wrong? And I just had to get comfortable yes. with it over time. Um, stay consistent with recording, which is super hard because it can be costly. Yeah. Um Yeah, but so I, I didn't have any like training or anything like that. Um everything I know was self taught. Um it wasn't until probably about Two or three years ago that I actually bought um, an online course because COVID had hit. So nobody was doing in-person vocal lessons. So right. <clears throat> I found this lady on Facebook named Cheryl Porter, um, and I bought one of her packages, and I started you know, kind of seeing what I was missing because I really want to build. Like, I want to be able to sing loud. Yes. Because I feel like I just sing low. That Whitney Houston yeah, kind of. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to reach the mass. Yeah. And, you know, get those shocking chords and figure it out, but... Um, it did help me, like, figure out, like, okay, I need to sing from here. From the diaphragm. It's a different voice from the head, from yeah. the throat. So um, the singing side, it was it's definitely a lot more to learn than just rapping. Yes. So when I started rapping, it was easy. And that's kind of how <laughs> I ended up drifting off from, from being an R&B artist because I was like, man, it's so hard. Um, I can't find anybody who's willing to work with me on my budget, yeah. you know, to – even get my vocals to sound how I need to in the studio and help me build up that confidence, like some real artist development stuff. So a lot of stuff that I learned, I learned from Jabo and my sister, um, yeah. just researching and 
put me out there. So, Absolutely, because as a vocalist, as a singer, it takes that engineer a lot more time mm-hmm. to to mix and master your vocals versus a, like a trap rapper or yes. something like that. Yes. So they may charge a little bit more because it's gonna it's more time consuming for them. It's way different. Like when I book my R and B sessions, I'm usually gonna spend about four hours. Yeah. The whole four hours on that song because you gotta think about the harmonies, mm. how the ad libs, like how do you want it to really sound and all that stuff. So I try to think about all that before I go. That way I can get it done in a decent time. But it just depends because sometimes you might record something and you don't hear it until like a week later. Then you got to go back in the studio and, and, you know, drop it and fix it how you want it. So um, the R&B part is just a, a little bit, it just takes a little bit more time, a little bit more care. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. But rapping, man, I can just go in and rap. <laughs> like. It's totally different. Yeah. When it comes to writing your music, do you sit down and put pen to paper? Um, I used to before they start putting these notepads yeah. on the phone. I did. Um, <laughs> I still do, though, because I try to transfer stuff that I want to keep um, permanently onto paper. So it kind of depends. Or if something comes to me so fast and my phone did, or I will write something down. Yeah. Or um, if I'm making a video and I have to have use my phone, I'll write it down so I'm not having to fight with having my notepad open with the camera. So just... You know, learning different tricks to making content and stuff like that um, depends on whether I write it down on paper or not. Where do you find yourself at the most often when you start coming up with ideas? When you're in the shower? Is it when you're driving? Like, where do you find... them 30 minute breaks from work. Every time, like, I literally, like, I stay probably like five to seven minutes away from my job, so... The whole time I'm racing home, like, going here, getting myself together because I'm doing things that I need to do to get myself together for the rest of the day. That's funny. But then it's like, i say something hard. I'll try to hurry up and record <laughs> or write something down. Or if I'm on scrolling on TikTok, <clears throat> they have a lot of different de- uh, beat makers on there that'll be like, hey, do it this beat or something like that. Right. So if I see something like that and I, that beat speak to me, I hurry up and try to write something real quick in them little 30 minutes. And then I, I might not get to drop it that day, but I'll start working on the idea you know (laughs) that's a true definition of using your time wisely you literally down to the second (laughs) squeeze everything you need but that's dope though because you got goals yeah you have you know what your priority is yeah and And music is your passion no what would you say through music it's your it's absolutely um a passion for you what do you feel like is your purpose um to tell my story and people who identify with me Feel like they're not alone. Yeah. Um, I feel like my other purpose is to just be myself, like my my genuine self. Like if I had to choose outside in between my two professions, I would definitely choose to just make music yeah. all day. Because, like you said, it is my therapy. That actually used to be like my whole brand before I was Janelle Jezebel. I was chemo, mm. and my brand was chemotherapy. But chemo was just a childhood nickname. And attached to those type of things is childhood traumas and, you know, stuff that you just don't want to take with you. Um, You would search my name on Apple Music and it would be 40 other chemos pop up. Right, 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 right. search Janelle Jezebel, you're going to only find me, Um, you know. So I feel like it was a transition, how I got the name, um, converting and trying to get everybody to get on board with the new name. I'm cool with my family and, you know, my close friends still calling me by my nickname and stuff, but... I definitely would like to be respected as Janelle Jezebel as well. You Absolutely. Know what I'm saying? So, You're standing on that. Most definitely. I am. I have to because um, it's been a few people who, who have tried to deter me from it and tell me they're all of their reasons. But then God, I always step in. My creator, I always step in and show me his reasons of why I'm going through this. This I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like anything I'm going through is for show or like um accident yeah. i think it's a part of my purpose but god so we're rocking out with janelle jezebel <laughs> as you should one thing about life is we have to do what works for us and what yeah. makes us happy unapologetically most definitely man we can never please everybody in life nor should we try i'm not trying no more like i feel like chemo was a, pe- a people pleaser to an extent like i would let stuff build up and then say what i had to say right now just bill ain't even gonna even be in contact with you or let it roll off it's gonna be done right because there are a lot of weird people in the world Mm -hmm. who are going to pick us apart yep no matter how good you're doing you could be doing everything right they're gonna still try to find a flaw within us but it's really because they're unhappy with themselves yep 
Yep. And they're going to try to throw shade. I deal with it. You know, being yeah. a, a female, a white female in this industry, I'd yeah. be dealing with some shade from time to time. But I don't al- I allow that to deter me because I'm doing what I love. Exactly. And that's that's the mindset that you have to keep. Yeah, 100%. That's you right. and I are slick on the same page <laughs> with a lot of stuff. And I love that, you know, because it's important because our peace of mind is priceless. Yes. And um, I cannot afford to lose my mind you no, know what I'm saying? absolutely you got a beautiful spirit thank you thank you, you have a beautiful spirit like I I, the, the energy is just radiating and i'm <laughs> loving it i'm taking it all in because I, it. I believe that you can transfer that energy you know and I, I like being around people like you who just have that good positive I energy feel that's what and i, I like feel the same about. like i definitely feel it genuinely like i don't i try not to force um anything yeah. you know what i'm saying so even like this is different for me like i think this this is my first time doing this ain't it Jabo? okay so well i'm glad it's with yes, me thank yes, you so you taking my virginity on podcast like, I, 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 really, I popped like, her cherry on the podcast <laughs> scene y'all i'm just saying yeah, I, I, I really been at the house the last two years just just trying to get myself together understood um, you have, have a baby there now yeah most definitely and i've been through a lot within the last five years you know what i'm saying so yeah, just trying to make sure I maintain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like you said, we got to keep our sanity. We got to keep our yes. peace of mind. And a lot of that comes, too, from the people we surround ourselves with. Yes. What well, yes. you got with you today? So I got my homeboy Jabbo with me today. Jabbo um, in the building. And I can tell he got good positive energy, yes, too. this is my guy. Uh, everybody I introduce him to, they like, bring him back. Yes. <laughs> That's a vibe right there. What's that? He's your safe space. That's what I call yeah. people that I feel really comfortable with. I call them my safe space, yes. and that's what he is for He's you. Definitely my safe space. Like whenever I don't feel comfortable, and my sister or somebody else can't get, I Jabo, can you please come with me? There you go. Exactly. Yes, that's my guy. That's whenever my anxiety go crazy and stuff, because I um, I also have I, well, they diagnosed me with bipolar and schizophrenia, so um, sometimes I have bad anxiety. I do too. And, um, I just need some a, a comfort buddy. You do. You know what I'm saying? So, you. And that's him for you. Yeah. Listen, and it's, it's okay to talk about that stuff and be yeah. transparent. I talk about it a lot because I experience a lot of anxiety, and sometimes yeah. I don't even know why. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. Like, I feel like as women, we, we have a lot of anxiety because we have a lot of expectation on us, and we just have to keep going. And when we can't, we get a little worried about it. A hundred percent. Man, but... We're overthinkers. Yeah, most definitely. Man. <laughs> we would think ourselves right into <laughs> right into an anxiety attack, like literally. So absolutely, yeah. there are so many times where I'll talk myself out of going to certain places or yep. doing certain things because I'm overthinking. Who's going to be there? What is it? The vibe going to be like? And you know what? I'm like, you know, what? I'm just not going to go because yep. I'm I'm going to end up sabotaging the whole night. <laughs> yep, I, I definitely have had moments the same way. Like I'm just nah, Jeff, I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I ain't got nothing to wear. Oh, no, definitely. That's my perfect excuse right exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, what are you working on right now? Because I know you said the last couple of years, you know, you have a, a new baby in your life, yeah. you know, but you're kind of getting back out there. You're here That's with that. me today. What are some of the things that you're focused on right now with your music career? Um, I'm working on telling my story um, for the most part. So was in 2021. I had a, a manic episode, <laughs> and it lasted for way too long. Um, I was unhinged, but I also found a lot of truth. Yeah. I was um, exposed to a lot of good information during that time, and um, I want to talk about it. Yeah, I want to tell people because a lot of people don't know what know what it looks like. Yeah, everybody thinks bipolar and or any type of mental health has this like a certain face. Yeah. And it looks this way, or this person is crazy, and it's like, no. It's not like that at all. Y'all be around me all the time, but then that particular time, it was just a different, it was different, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I was going through some things. I wasn't eating. I was trying to graduate. I was starting a nonprofit. Um, it was just a lot yeah. going on, working full time and not sleeping is not good for your health. That's <laughs> so one of the worst things. <laughs> That's why I said I was in bed to sleep by midnight last yes. night, which is early for me. Yes. It's important for your mental clarity. Most definitely. Most go to bed. That's that's what I learned. <laughs> and listen, I, 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 that's the thing I struggle with because I sometimes I would be up till two in the morning just watching yes, TV. I'm like, this is so unproductive. Mm-hmm. If I'm not actually doing something productive, then go to bed, like yep. you said. Yeah, for real, because you're just poisoning your mind with what they got on the TV. 
stand up late. You're gonna be groggy when you gotta get up and go to work. Cranky, in the morning. cause I be yes, I be so I, I'm cranky. I'm not a morning person, and I have to get up and go to school like <laughs> super duper early. So I be hoping Miss Darla at the school like give me an hour with Miss Darla, cause gosh, this is just a, a hard morning. You know what I'm saying? Or just anxiety. Like I remember working at Amazon. I had so much anxiety working there because it just was. It was a lot. Yes. <laughs> I've heard it was a lot. I've heard. Um, I enjoyed what I did, but yeah. not enough break time. Too much, too much walking to get to the break room. It was just stuff that just mm-mm. absolutely so much parking, so much, so many people. Just a lot. It was a lot coming from where I came from. It was different because my job is pretty relaxed. It's not. Yeah, I work with kids. It's not production. So absolutely. I don't have nobody pulling up on me saying, "Hey." He didn't make rate right today and all that stuff. Who got and, time for that? You know, the super micromanaging, I don't, no, I don't care for it. I can't yeah. deal with people like that either. Mm-hmm. You know, especially when we like independent women, we don't yeah. want people micromanaging Mm-mm. us, you I don't know. Want nobody hovering over or me. Or telling me what to do. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So so going back to what you were talking about, do you think at any point in time you may either make like a, a documentary or write a book or start a podcast talking about your journey? Everybody wants me to start a podcast. You should. And I feel like you just solidified it because people do want me to talk about mental you have a health good mostly. Voice for it. Okay. I've been told that. <laughs> you do. You really do. I appreciate that. Well, that's something that I can consider. Um, I'm definitely working on telling my story. So that's p- pretty much how I'm putting my project out. I want to drop it. Um, this has never been told before, but <laughs> just because um, this is what you guys should be looking forward from me. Um, I want to drop it like a Netflix series thing. Mm. So it'll be like um, a project, Yeah. but it'll be like episodes because they refer to bipolar is you having an episode. episode so yeah. each episode would be a different feeling or something that I went through during that time or just over time, you know, and stuff that deals with mental health. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to build a momentum up and drop like a project that looks like a series. So, I love that. Yeah. I think you should definitely do that because I feel like mental health is swept under the rug far yeah. too often. It needs to be talked about. Most definitely. I talk about it a lot, and I know some people may not want to hear it, but I'm like, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Yeah. Because a lot of people are either ashamed of it or they are in denial. Yep. You or know? don't even know what's going oh, on. Oh, don't even know what's they going on. They just got an attitude. <laughs> but it's like, no, look deeper. Look in, be- in between the lines and see what's really going on with you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Don't be afraid to go to the doctor and potentially get diagnosed. Yes. You know, like that's important. And I had shared with my doctor a, a little while back, I'm like, I'm really experiencing yeah. a lot of anxiety and like I feel so anxious sometimes where I sometimes I just want to throw my phone yes. against the wall. Yes. And he said, yeah. start out with journaling. Mm-hmm. Anytime you start to feel like frustrated or even do it when you get up in the morning. Yep journal write all those emotions down and when i started doing that it really it helps. helps yeah it's probably the same thing with your music yep so i don't hold anything in anymore like yeah. i used to be like timid like i don't want to write this because I'm, I'm afraid somebody might feel the way about what i'm saying and all that type of stuff it's not me saying it out of ill intent if it happened it happened i got to get it off my chest so i can leave my brain and i can think about something else because I have a lot of other ideas and things that I want to bring to fruitation, but I can't if I'm always holding on to stuff. Plus, I have a cousin. Um, she has her master's, I think, in psychology, and we were talking one day, and she was like, you know why your chest always hurting? She's like, because you don't be saying what, you, what you're supposed to say. Mm. And when you, when you hold that in, you have chest pains. People don't connect that type of stuff. It's the facts. And, but it, it, it's true. That's what happens when you don't speak your mind, your throat. Your, your your throat will literally start hurting or you go hoarse because you're not saying what you need to say. Yeah, so it's, um, facts. it's a lot that goes into, you know, just working with yourself as a human being. Um, everything is not as what it seems. You got to really dive deep into who you are. Absolutely. It's always yeah. a work in progress. Yes. It is like I feel like I'm constantly a work in progress. I'm Most sure you do as well. Like changing every two seconds. <laughs> like what I was just thinking might have been right. Two seconds ago, I now like, no, nah, that's wrong. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we have to reevaluate ourselves, our situation, the people around us. Yep. Because sometimes it's it's the company we keep mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. can be contributing to our situation. We don't even realize it. Yeah. You gotta have someone like him who's your safe space, and that's hard to come by. Yeah, it is. That is difficult is. to come by. But yeah, I think you should definitely start a podcast and and focus on like mental health because okay. I personally 
I'm an advocate for it. Okay. I even thought about, you know, going to therapy because I've got a lot of traumas from yeah. my younger years that I have not been able to let go. I definitely recommend that because that helped me a lot. Yeah. Ooh, because at first that it was eating me up. Yeah. That's how I lost my job at Amazon because I would constantly just be thinking about how this shit that happened to me when I was a kid Man. and I just couldn't let it go. And like, that's another thing. Y'all stop that negative um, talk about people coming out with their stories. Why Why she wait till she was 30? Why she wait till she was 40? You don't process stuff like that when you're a child. A hundred percent. Like you have to, I feel like you process things that happen to you three times. You process it as a child for one, which you would no understanding. Then when you're about 20 something, it comes up again. You're like, Oh yeah, that happened to me, but I kind of suppressed it. By the time you're 30, you mad about it. You yes. know what I'm saying? So now it's like, y'all need to know my story. Y'all need to know what happened to me. This is what happens out here to people, you know, and everybody's like, why you wait so long? It's like, I wasn't able to process it at that age. I agree. I was not old enough. Right. The brain I have now is not what I had then. Totally you know? different. Totally and, different. And it's going to continue to change. Yeah. So, you know, you just stand up for yourself. Don't let nobody tell you um, that you have a time frame to get over your trauma Work through it, most definitely. Don't let it, you know, consume you. But yeah, exactly. That's yeah, the thing like, too. You is just can't let it consume your whole life. And at first, like my whole twenties, well, I say my late twenties, I start to let me consume me because yeah. it's like y'all. It's like nobody cares, but that's the truth. Nobody cares outside of you. You have you're gonna find people who are genuinely there for you, and they're gonna show you that they care. But you can't go thinking that just nobody cares about you because. That's the truth. Like, it's a billion people, seven billion people on this earth. Absolutely. Everybody can't be thinking about you every waking second, but you can. You can be thinking about yourself and fixing and working on yourself. So that's what I did. I started to do the root work. I got me a therapist. Shout out to my sister for plugging me on that. Yeah. And um, I just had somebody to talk, and she really didn't say too much. So everything I said was me just really working through my problems, just having somebody to sit there who was tr professionally trained yes. you know, to, you know, just help me have a talk yes. that's unbiased nobody just willing waiting to say something back you know what I'm saying so it helps absolutely and that's what's so good about a therapist you know yeah. like I have a good friend of mine she's currently you know in therapy and mm -hmm. that's what she said her therapist is a man and he just listens to her yeah. Gives her an ear, doesn't, you know, butt in and say, well, you should do this. That's the yeah. wrong thing. You don't yeah. need people because they haven't lived your life. They haven't exactly. walked in your footsteps to, to give you that type of life advice. And that's one of the things that my therapist pointed out. She was like, we are polar opposites. I have never experienced any of the things that you just sat here and told me. But I, I commend you for standing here and coming to see me. Absolutely. To come help me because, I mean, at one point I didn't want to be here. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So. It happens. We go yeah. through that in life. Most deaf, most deaf. But I, I, listen, I commend you. Man, thank you, you. I thank you. Sounds like you've been through a lot. Yeah. You're here to talk about it. You're doing your music. That's your therapy for you. Got a yes. family. Yes. A lot of accomplishments. And that's I'm, what I've learned and as I mature and get older is I really try to find the positive in everything. Yep. Don't focus on the negative. Nope. Because then you're going to consume yourself with negativity. Yep. And whatever you focus on grows, you <laughs> will start festering that sh in your Facts. life. Like it's going to come <laughs> 10 times over. So if you focus on the bad, like say for instance, a lot of artists, they complain about not having the support. Yes. Somebody is supporting you. You're just overlooking it because you won't, it's, it's not who you want it to be. Your cousin them ain't supporting you. So you like, oh man, nobody support me. But their ne next door neighbor just gave you $20 for your CD. Right. That support cater to them people. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So you have to find your crowd. You have to find your tribe and what works for you and leave the rest behind. Absolutely. Because yeah. everybody's journey is different. Yeah, most definitely. And the the last people we should ever expect to support us is our family. You most know what I'm saying? They don't catch on until you already got it. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? You Especially if they're not involved now, in music. I can't say that. My fa I can't say that. I don't have that, that effect on going on. My family has been supporting me pretty pretty hard. That's you know? dope. Um, if they can't make it to the show, they buy merch. If they can't buy the merch, they come into the show. Or, you know, they, they find, they make it, they share my stuff. You know, just... The simple things. It support comes in different ways. Yes. And um, it, I don't know. I just haven't had the negative experience on that aspect. That's that's a so, blessing. Shout out to your family for definitely. loving Shout on you, you supporting you. Shout out to y'all. Yes. Cause like literally, almost everybody in my family has bought a shirt from me. Oh, that's dope. So um, they know how important this is. They know this is my therapy. They also think I have really great music. So um, 
I just I'm very appreciative of my support system, most definitely. I don't even call people my fans for real. I call them my support system because they help me like stay sane. They help me create. You know, this it's bigger than just a fan, like somebody who just likes my music. They I, they support me as an individual. So you should come up with a name for them then. Like, you yeah. know, Beyonce has her beehive yeah, or Nikki true. has the that's barbs. True. Because it really makes them feel like they're a part of your journey. Most definitely. So you gotta come up with a name for your, your support okay. system. You know, definitely. It's your homework assignment. I got you. I got you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Outside of music, you know, I know you're a teacher. You know, you you have a family. What else do you enjoy doing? If you just have a little bit of free time, what can we catch you doing? You can catch me in the gym. Yeah. Because I've been trying to get rid of this big bag. (laughs) (laughs) That's a thing right now. Yes. Y'all fellas lay off us with these big bags, man. Hey, man, they just won't leave us alone. No. So that's one thing I've been doing is um, I've been doing a lot of working out. That's um, great. That's good therapy, too. Root work. Um, I like to go hiking. I like to bike ride. I we, love going hiking. We have to get. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, listen, you guys are going to hear this on camera right now. I'm going to drive to your city. Okay. And we're going to hike together. Yeah, I got all the spots already linked Please. on my phone. So. That's what every year for my birthday I go hiking somewhere. Okay. That's what I did. Um, not last year, but the year before. Uh, we went hiking and then we went to, um, it's like an underground lake. Um, somewhere up in, I don't even remember where it was. That is dope. That was cool. It was like the water was like super blue and it oh, had little fish man. and stuff. It's like one of the largest underground lakes and it's in Tennessee. So please try to remember at some yeah. point in time. So yeah, so you love being outside. Yeah, I do. It, um, that's how I keep myself grounded, like getting c- in connection with nature. Um, yes. I like to just sit in the woods. Me too. The wood and just Me just too. chill and relax. I think you and I might be the same person. <laughs> hey, sometimes you, hey, I'm telling you, sometimes it be like that. You meet yourself in different bodies. A hundred percent. That <laughs> is them. crazy. I love like when I'm not here, I'm either in a gym yep. or I'm outside yep, I on love someone's it. trail or a mountain or something. Yes, that's that's my vibe. Like. You Every catch good then, energy. Because my Jabbo like the club. He like, he like the, he, he like the, the energy. Club. So, you know, sometimes we, we, I hit the club, too. I'm, of course. I'm well-rounded. Yeah. But, yeah. For my birthdays, I'd be liking to go outside <laughs> and do something fun. I'm the yeah. same way. I, I went to hiking. Just, my birthday was last month, and I went okay. hiking. Like, that... Every year I plan out a trip That's what's up. somewhere, but I would love to come up there. And most definitely, please come. I will. I will. You have my word. Yeah, I'll make definitely. that drive. It's not that far. No, it's not. It's I can not. go there and come back same day. You most know what definitely. I'm saying? And we got some really, really nice stuff. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. I don't even think Jabba ever been hiking with me. You got to come. Listen, mm-hmm. it's it's good for your physical and your mental. Yes, it is. Build it your is. endurance up. It does. And what I found, too, and you probably are going to agree with me, every time I'm out there, everybody's so friendly. Yes. I've never met a mad person on the trail. Ever. Ever. Never met a mad person on the trail. Because they're getting, first of all, y'all got to get in the sun more often because we need that natural vitamin Most D. Definitely. You know? That's why y'all brains ain't functioning. <laughs> That's <laughs> we need it's the truth. Not the tap water. We need some spring water yes. and some sunlight. So, yes. yes, most definitely. Like, I still, even though I'm not chemotherapy anymore, I still push chemotherapy. Yeah. You have to take care of yourself. Get you some vitamin D. Increase those endorphins. Go outside. Yes. Drink some water. Eat some fruit and vegetables. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the vibe out of I love it. I love it. Yeah, we definitely are going to connect. Most Absolutely. Definitely. Does your Most girlfriend definitely. enjoy hiking as well? Oh, yeah. That's the hiking queen. She's the hiking like, that's queen. That's the person. We, we, can't, we can't let her lead the pack. If I'm not coming ready. soon. <laughs> I promise you. I, yeah. Listen, I would appreciate you guys allow me to come up there and join you guys sometime. Most definitely. I would definitely. love that. That would be definitely a vibe for me. So, that's yeah. dope, man. That is that's so, so I, that's good. Now we've got something else we've connected yeah. on outside the music industry. Right, right. Definitely. Um, anything else that you have coming up or in the works that people need to stay in tune for? Uh, yes. Actually, I'm dropping my next single on May 31st, which is my grandmother's birthday. I always pick release, uh, release dates that are significant to me. Yes. I don't care what day of the week is on. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm creating my own algorithm. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, May 31st, Transparency, my new single, will be released on all platforms. Um, I'm also working on my own app. Mm. That way people can just download the app and stream me straight from or buy my product, my music, everything straight from the uh, app because I see everything is going back to direct consumer. And, um, it is. I want to tap in on that that side. So I got my best friend, uh, Casey Tillerson. She's working on my app for me. Good um, for you. I feel like God just has aligned me with the right people. Yeah. And, um... I just got to keep pushing. 
Yes, and you will. Yes, you sound like you have a great support system. I do. We're I coming do. up with a name for them, though. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. No, you're absolutely right. A lot of artists are seeing what's going on. There's a lot of Fugazi stuff going mm -hmm. on with not only the streaming platforms, but the actual distribution companies. Yes, man. They're they doing us dirty. <laughs> yes, yes. Pulling people's music down, saying mm -hmm. that the streams aren't real, and keeping the money. That's, yes. that's what it is. It's a money grab yeah, for it's them. It's definitely the money. So if we can... You know, find a way to keep that in our pockets, in our circle, then that's what's going to be most beneficial to us as artists. So, you know, show money is always good when you can tap into that. But we want some streaming money too, man. Spotify Absolutely. Needs to definitely give us more money. Everybody needs to give us more money, I agree. honestly. I agree. And, you, and as I think if artists come together collectively mm -hmm. and stand on that, you guys can make a change. Most definitely. We just have to stand on it. Like, um, I know she's not indie, but indie re already tried to start the push. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She was like, hey, man, we need to take our music down off of these streaming platforms. And, you know, I don't know who we're going to go to, but we definitely need to not let them keep doing us the way they're doing us. So. Have, I've been telling a lot of artists about this particular site. You may yeah. or may not be familiar, even.biz. No. Even.biz, it sounds like you're familiar. Even.biz allows you to uh, sell directly to the consumer. Okay. It's completely free for an artist. They oh, take sweet. a percentage of your sales. Right. But what's so dope is you could say you put a single up there. Yeah. You can say, you know what? I don't want people to pay me less than a dollar. So you set the price at a dollar. Okay. But I can come along and say, you know what? I rock I with her. With I'm going to pay you $5. See, yeah. Artists are making a lot more money. Like if you look them up, on Instagram, like, La yeah. Russell's a part of their movement. Okay, like, you okay. know, so they're very legit. And I know okay. multiple artists who are making great money off that site. They can pay you for streaming, too. But if they yeah. actually want to purchase it from you, they can. They can yeah. so, and and it, that's the purpose of me creating an app because I was going to have it to where they can just purchase the singles or purchase all my, any of my music yeah. off the app. So, Smart. We yeah. you got we got to take it back to the basics is Most really what definitely. it boils down to. Yeah. Because all this other stuff comes into play and it kind of messes the like you said the algorithms and all yes, that. Yes, man. So and I like meeting my my support system. Yeah. I definitely like meeting them every time because they the energy yeah. It's always great energy every time I meet somebody and they treat me like I'm already famous and it's it's kind of overwhelming for me because it's like <laughs> I'm just little old me but <laughs> I like it I like the fact that they feel that way about me it, it keeps me afloat and make me feel like that about myself too so. absolutely you're yeah. a superstar to them I yeah. love that like that's literally been my nickname the last couple of weeks I feel like everybody's been you the superstar, superstar. exactly <laughs> that's a beautiful thing though yes yes that's what's going to keep you motivated and Most keep definitely. you wanting you to do this because it is a crazy business it is it definitely is absolutely for people who are interested in keeping up with the movement I know there's an app on the way where can they follow you on your socials um i'm on everything at janelle jezebel that is j-a-n-e-l-l-e-j-e-z-e-b-e-l-l-e -L -L -E. sorry for the long name but it's just what it is. <laughs> um i think the only one that might be different is twitter and I don't really fool with Twitter. Yeah, I don't mess with it too goodness. much, especially it's now. So it's X now. Ooh, I'm just like, it's just like, I can't even find the thing, the uh, notification thing. So yeah. it's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good with them. But that one might be Jane Jesse. So yeah. But other than that, Janelle Jezebel, you can find me on everything um, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. I'm everywhere. And the app is on the way. Yes. Your current single is called Mango. Yes. Who produced that one? Um, his name is The Magic Man. Oh, okay. um, I like that name. I don't know him personally. Um, I kind of was like, I need some beats. Yeah. And I, I want to try out Lisa, and I never leased before. Yeah. Um, I'm usually an exclusive type of girl, but um, everybody's like, you need to save some money, man. You need to try this out. So I went on uh, Airbit.com, and I found him. I was like, I like this beat. And I was joking with one of my coworkers one day. I was like, I'm going to write a song about mangoes. And then it just came to fruitation for yeah. real. It was like the perfect beat, and it just went with it. So I wrote it. Um, I hit up the beat maker to see if I can get the exclusive rights, and he had already sold it. But my contract said that I could push the song for 10 years. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so um, I'm going by my contract, and um, I've been rocking out with it. Um, I shot a video with it with uh, AK Films. Shout out to him. Um, he's also from my city. He's moved out of, to Memphis, but um, he's also a native of Chattanooga. Yeah. Um, he's a dope videographer. Um, he does pretty good treatments and stuff like that. So 
Um, I hit him up, and he was like, yo, this is a dope song. Let's shoot it. Let's nah, it. for real. Yeah. You need that visual. And, and what I tell artists, too, like if you lease a beat or whatever yeah. and the song really starts to take off, you can always go to a beat maker you know and have them recreate, recreate it, it for you. Change it up ever so slightly. Yep. That way you know you own it. Because yep. leasing is good for that option. Most definitely. You don't so. want to spend 2500 on a on a beat, and then it that song doesn't really do anything. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. So. I'm starting off on the low end to see how things go yeah. and then just building my momentum up like you're, that. So You're doing it the right way. How I often appreciate. are you releasing music? Um, Not very often. Not as often as I would like to. So that's something you could work so on. this year I'm working on that. Um, I've been going to the studio and recording stuff up. Yeah. And then I'm getting it going to the, uh, the mixing process. And then I'm kind of trying to see what I want to actually go on the project and what could be a filler song. Mm. So I have about... Three other songs that I feel like might be filler songs, like singles, yeah. but the rest of them I'm trying to save them for the project. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You got to strategize with that. That all that, especially when you're putting a full body workout. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to have no misses on there. Like that's everything's that's, something I that's want some, everything to sound. I can't. I cannot fall off. Like <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? I got to keep the same momentum that I've been having, and everybody know me for that. They know me for that hype music, but yeah. then when I slid the R and B, they was like, okay, okay. I didn't know you were still doing R&B. Sometimes I'll, I'll even sing and rap on the same track. So it just depends on love the it. vibe of what I'm feeling that day. Absolutely. So. And that's dope because there's not a lot of artists who can switch it up like yeah, that. Yeah. You can give them a little bit of both. Yeah. Does other genres ever pique your interest, like tapping into maybe a little country or um, something like that? Yeah. Like, it's so funny. <laughs> I was talking to one of my, I think my best friend, the one who's working on the app, and we were talking about becoming like country western artists like <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, before this even even from Tennessee. It. Yes, man, it was like, man, this is so funny. But now everybody's doing Western or doing country music. They so are. I was like, dang, that's crazy. I've always felt like I've been able to predict trends pretty yeah. well. So um, I don't know about country, but I, I wrote a rock song before. There you go. Um, I wrote a gospel song before. Okay. So I've tapped into other genres. Um, I've wrote a pop song before. I actually sold a pop song uh, probably about seven, eight years ago. That's dope. I don't know what that artist is doing now. It's like a freelance artist. He yeah. wanted to uh, go to the studio, write a song, and he paid me for my lyrics and stuff. And That's dope. I don't know what he's doing now, but, you know, it was a good song. I, I would hope he would have pushed it. Exactly. I haven't heard from him since. <laughs> I think he kind of maybe fell on the wayside. But it was a really good pop song, like really, really good. So that's kind of my forte is I want to get um, – I want to get in my songwriting bag. I want to get into the industry and start writing for people. So yes, right now I kind of got my eye on Megan and Glow. Yeah, I feel like I might be able to. Yeah, Glow. Slide them something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just want to be in somebody credits as a songwriter. That's like my ultimate goal. Like outside of releasing my own music and being big in that. Yes. I want to be in somebody's credits. Especially since you can write different genres yeah. as well. You're not just stuck in doing one lane. Like, and that opens you up to a broader audience. Yeah, I definitely. think that's why a lot of artists are finally getting on board with doing other genres of music because yeah. We all love hip hop, yeah, but not everybody does, <laughs> right? So okay, true. if you want to reach the masses, you, you might need to, to tap it up, yep, exactly. Definitely, Afro beats—that's big right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a feel good music, most definitely. Uh, I would, I would like to do an Afro beat. I've heard, um, I don't know if the guy is from my city, but I met him at this uh, event called Pass the Ox, and he was the first guy I had heard in town doing like Afro beats, and I was just like, oh wow, this is. This is sound. This sounded good. So I also wanted to sound good when I do it. Like yeah, I, you know what I'm saying. So I don't. I try not to touch nothing I ain't comfortable with. But I feel over time I definitely will get there. Hundred percent. Who does the uh, past the ox event? Is it L Nice? Um, I know L Nice does an event like that. Okay. No, it's um. His name is Dwayne Kennemore. Okay. He's actually Wayne on a beat. Mm. Um. He's produced for some big people. Dope. Um, I think he his last big one was um. Polo G. Okay. So, um, yeah, he has a studio that he's been, um, that he built out in chat, and um, it's been doing pretty good. He has, like, two different rooms. That's dope. And also, had, like, a small art gallery. I think they just added a photography room. Mm. So, yeah, he'll just randomly, like, post, like, hey, we're doing Ox Pass the Ox this weekend. I love it. And he'll invite, you know, local artists to come in and just play their music. And we kind of, like, network, and, you know, you never know who's going to be in there. 100%. Shout out to him. What's his name, Dwayne? Yeah, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Kennemore, Wayne on the Beat. Wayne yeah. on the Beat, man. Shout out to you, bro, for putting these opportunities for these artists out and putting artists in your city on. I respect that. That's big yeah. right there. Most um, I know you got a lot of people that love you, support you. Who do you want to give thanks to? Um, I want to give thanks to 
First of all, my family, my mom, my dad, you know, because they birthed me. Yeah. They birthed the gym. <laughs> yes, they did. You a diamond, baby. <laughs> so um, I want to give a shout-out to them. I want to give a shout-out to my sister, Lachey Rockymore. Uh, Rockymore Mitchell, excuse me, because she just got married. <laughs> oh, okay. And her Congratulations. Husband, uh, DJ Sleepy, because he's my DJ. Okay. Um, whenever I need him, he's sliding through. I'm helping him pack up, and we out. So, um, Jabo, um, he is very influential, like, as far as, like, motivating me, like, now nah, you need to do this, you need to do that, and he be on point most of the time, so, um, I would say shout out to Quattro for plugging me, because, yes. um, he's a very genuine person, like, he's really cool. He like, is you know so dope, and he so is. tall. Yes, he is, he's tall, he's really tall. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, and I also want to give a shout out to you for having me, um, of course, it's my been city. A pleasure. And uh, my creator, you know, God, like, yeah. none of this would be possible without the higher power, like, you know what I'm saying, so. Shout out to yourself. And myself, most definitely, Miss Janelle Jezebel, a shout yeah. out to me um, yeah. for never giving up and keep keep going, because I have thought about it <laughs> several times, like, yeah. I remember telling Jabo probably about, what, probably about two, three months ago, all right, bro, this is the last run. After this one, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be teaching children, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but now I don't feel like that. Yeah. I feel... Totally opposite of that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's so, beautiful. Yeah. Can't run from what's your passion. No, I think I've been chosen to do this. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, you are chosen, and it makes you happy. Yeah, it that's does. That's the most it important does. Like, thing. I literally get grumpy when I can't record. Yeah. That's when I, like, I don't have to go to my therapist no more because if I go to the studio, it's the same effects. Like, you know what I'm saying? So... My girlfriend knows I get a little, I can get a little pissy when I don't get to go to the studio. <laughs> money a little tight, can't do what we want yeah. to do. But I always find a way, God always find a way to work stuff out to where right before I'd be ready to push to the edge, all right, we got you a studio session book. We got you. We, we good to go. Get to hear myself. I go, hey, this is where I hear this vision. Because every time I write a song, I try to write a video with it. Like yeah. I want it to be a package deal. So. Yes. Yeah, just as long as I can record, I'm good. Have you thought about maybe getting a setup at your house? I do. I have one at my house, but I need to swap out my interface. Got you. So that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to get me a really nice one. An that Apollo way Twin? I can, man, I, my homeboy had one. He said he sold it. So I'm going to tell you where you got to find him because my significant other, he's an audio engineer. It's what he does for okay, a living. Okay. He bought an Apollo Twin from a pawn shop okay. for about half of what it sells retail. Gotcha. Works perfectly because okay. people fall on hard times. Yeah. So they go pawn it. So if you got any pawn shops near you, start. So you Most can deaf. get good mics from there. Most he, he, every week, he makes his rounds to the pawn shop. He even bought the speakers, like the really okay. good speakers from there. Yeah, like the monitors. The okay. monitors, yeah. Yeah, so check some local pawn shops. You might find some great deals there. Okay, yeah, because I definitely, that's my next two upgrades is my interface and um, my microphone. Yeah. So I have everything. I already have monitors, speakers, and stuff. So I do, I, that's, I practice at home. So yeah. before I go to the studio for real, because I know they got the best interface. Yeah, that, of course. That crisp sound. Yeah. It just I don't get that at my house. Yeah. But I practice so I know what tone, how, how aggressive, how light I want to be. So before I go, um, I say when I go to the studio, it takes me probably like 30 minutes to knock out a song now. Yeah. I mean, I book a four-hour session, so I just try to get as many as I can done. And it just also depends on, like, if I keep on overthinking, like, oh, let me add this. <laughs> oh, that didn't sound good. Let's take that off. So, you know, just working it like that. Absolutely. You know. hey, make it make sense. Yep, that's true. Make it make sense. That's true. Um, anybody else that you want to shout out to? You think you covered everybody? Um. My little baby, my son, yeah, because he really loves my music. He's so sweet. Just in a year, become my biggest hype man. I think he is my biggest fan. Like he, like every time I play anything, he's like, "Give me that phone. Give me your phone right Aww. now, so I can rock out." He want to hold the phone. So sweet. He knows, like, even when the beat drops, he, he don't, knows it's he you. Know it's me. He's like, and he's looking at me like, "Oh, that's mama, that's you." So, so sweet. Man, it's 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 crazy. Because if he don't like a song, he won't dance. He gonna to let it. you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, he. I haven't had that problem just yet. <laughs> you said his name is Genesis. Yeah, Genesis approved. Yes, it's, it's gotta yes. be. You have gotta have that Genesis stamp if on I don't it. Get one of these. Yeah, you I, I, get... I know it. I need to go back to the drum board. Yeah. That's so dope. I love it. I got one last question for you. Yes. We live. Industry. Industry's most wanted. Most the big one, not the little one. Wanted. What makes you the industry's most wanted? Um. I feel like I my content is a little bit different. Like I'm gonna give you the filler songs, the dance and bop. 
and I'm also going to give you some substance to yes. it. So, like, today I'm giving you the mango. I'm giving you the mainstream. I'm giving you the, the bubble gum, as they call it. Yes. But it's also a part of me. It's fun. It's dancey. I wrote the song. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny. I wrote the second verse when I was, like, 14, 15 years old mm. to this song. So I couldn't release it then. I wasn't grown. I yeah. hadn't even had sex or anything. So, yeah. you know, it was a different vibe. But then I heard this beat, and I was like, this, this matches. Yeah. Let me use this from when I was 15. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just one of my fun records, you yeah. know what I'm saying, something that I was able to vibe to. But you're also going to get some Kendrick Lamar from me. You're also going to get some Lauryn Hill from me. Like, a lot of people refer to me as, like, a new age Lauren Hill. Yes. So um, I can't wait to, you know, give more of that. Yeah. You're well-rounded when it comes to your artistry. I love it. I appreciate it. it. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. We are about it here, y'all. Most of All in the sheets and tango. I got a wrong luck. No, she won't go home.